Uh, we'll go right you, you bet. Thank you very much uh, for, for having the Wildcats uh, to the Liberty Bowl. Um, fired up about the opportunity. Um, obviously, a, a bowl with an unbelievable tradition. And, you know, we're looking forward to having the opportunity to go square off against Navy, who's a very, very good football team that will, will be all that the, the Wildcats want, obviously. Questions? Questions? When you talk about this matchup, everyone wants to talk about that Navy offense. But what's the Navy defense for you? Well, obviously they are very, very sound. They understand their fits, uh, and you know, just all you got to do is go look at their inside linebacker number fifty-four. The style and the way that he plays football, how he plays the game, um, is a tribute to how I'm sure they go about their business every day. I mean, they're they're sound at what they do, and they play physical and they play hard, um, and and they make you make big plays against them. You may just describe why this is, but they give up around three yards to carry against the run. What's helped them be so good against the run? This season? Well, a little bit twofold. One, they fit things very, very well as far as understanding how they fit the defense. And then secondly, they're going to try to put pressure on you. Um, they're, they're generally speaking not going to just play with four guys at the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to get five and six guys. Um, I, I believe they know that if they can get off the field as a defense, their offense will keep the ball and, and give them a great opportunity to win football games. Do they look similar to any defense you face this year? Are they kind of completely unique? Well, you know, a lot of the the Big Twelve obviously is is a lot of three down, what what we'd call an odd front, and and they're not exclusively four down, but but much more four down than probably we see on a week in week out basis. When one of the Navy players earlier uh, described to me the fact that maybe Skyler was a little bit like Ian Book, the quarterback in Notre Dame. Did you see any, any similarities between the two? You know, uh, to be quite honest with you, I don't know that I've seen Notre Dame play enough to, 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 uh, to truly say that. The thing that I feel like is that he has become a dual threat quarterback, meaning that there are a number of games, big games that we were able to win where Skyler became a run threat. Um, and I, I really believe his best attribute is his arm and his understanding of, of our offense. But I think he does run the ball well enough that people have to try to defend the run game. I know we're on one press room in Manhattan with Coach Kleiman. He mentioned that you guys have to do a lot more bowl game preps than normal versus folks on the young players in practice. But are there any of the young players that really stood out? Uh, you know, I've been really, really happy with the whole group, um, especially the offensive line. And, and the, the offensive line, it's important that they do come along because, you know, we have five senior starters. Um, but, you know, Cooper Beebe is an example of a young man that's a true freshman that we really feel like has got a great future ahead. Obviously, his work ethic's got to continue to be a, a huge part of who he is. Um, but right now, he's shown that. He's shown that he wants to get better every day. Um, and and I'm, I'm only using him as the example. But we we were happy in general with the entire offensive line and, and the, the freshman group in general. Uh, he's, he's playing tackle right now, but he's also played a number of snaps of guard. He, he's he's a, a guy that I, uh, we feel like uh, cerebrally, mentally, will be able to handle either position. When you think back to uh, Josh Young Blood first getting here, how did he make the transition from high school quarterback to Guy. You know, I, I well, the first thing was right after he signed, um, he was one of the first guys, if not the first guy, asking for information, asking for playbook, asking, getting on the phone with with Coach Ray and talking offensive scheme. Um, and then when he got here in the in June, um, he was he was probably as good as anybody at being able to bring what he had learned or what he'd received um, uh, during the, the, the winter or spring, really, and transferring it or taking it to the field uh, in June. So when they had their, their captain's practices, when they were out there uh, after, after the weight room workouts and, the, and the, the, the conditioning stuff, he already knew what the formations were so he could start learning the offense. How do you, how do you feel like an offseason will benefit Josh? Well, I think the biggest thing that it'll allow him to do is is bring that big playability that he has as a return guy to the field on the offense, um, and and that's something we've got to get get from him. Um, if it's handing it to him on the the fly sweep type stuff, or if it's throwing it to him down the field, um, we got to get more out of him so that you know guys don't only ask me questions about Malik; they ask me about Josh also as a receiver because I I really feel like we're going to have some some wide receivers that that can create issues for people. You know, 
know, I, I use Malik as an example, but we're very happy with Philip Brooks. I'm very happy with Joaquin Gill. And um, the, the guy that probably came on the most the last four weeks was actually Sebastian Taylor, uh, as far as a guy that made some huge plays for us. I, I shouldn't say the last few weeks, because I believe even the TCU game, he had a huge catch down there uh, that put us to fourth and one, where we were able to go for it and convert. Sorry to ask you about Malik, but uh, you, you feel like he's healthy enough? Yeah, he's as healthy as he's been in a, in a, in a while. Um, so I feel really, really good about him. Coach, you're a first-year program in a bowl game. Was it hard to balance putting things in for this game and also just focusing on getting better? Well, uh, thankfully, uh, we, we really felt like we're able to, to put our, quote, general or normal offense in against, against this defense. Um, there are some weeks you'd go into it and say, hey, because of what somebody does, you can't maybe run what would you'd consider to be your base stuff. Um, as an example, our defense this week, uh, uh, this not week, this entire bowl prep, obviously has had to worry much more about option than, than they normally would. For us, because this is a four down, for the most part, four down defense, um, that we were able to basically say, hey, we can continue to get better at who we are um, while we continue to prepare for Navy. Other than Skyler, how do you view the quarterback situation moving forward, given that you did to those two players to transfer? Yeah, uh, it, it'll be interesting because this spring will be a huge, huge spring for us. Um, obviously, Nick, Nick, and and Jaron need to have really, really good springs. Um, you know, I think that that um, you know it's kind of crazy to say it this way, but Skyler can still grow, especially mentally, of who we are offensively. Um, you know, and then uh, then we're going to obviously have uh, um, you know one of the guys we signed will be here this spring. Um, that'll give him a, a, a jump ahead as far as is just trying to learn the offense and trying to feel comfortable in his skin when he's when he's making calls. Um, so that'll be it'll be an important spring for us from a quarterback standpoint. How much have you what seen you like? specifically grow? Uh, you know, Jaron, uh, like every freshman, ha has had a little bit of roller coaster. Um, there's days where you, you come away saying, "Wow, he's starting to figure it out," and because he, he's got great arm talent, and, and we feel like he's going to be a, a really really good thrower of the football. Um, but it still comes back to that position is so mental. I mean, when you look at all the great ones, uh, just using the NFL as the example, it's the guys that are able to, to almost anticipate and know what's going to happen before it actually does, so they're able to, to, to operate so well. And that's where Jaron's got to get it so the game slows down for him. I haven't got to ask you about him yet. What you like him like you know, uh, he's a winner. Um, he's he's done a great job of of taking care of of what it is to get ready for a game. Um, they had some huge games down the stretch of, of their season, um, playing against teams that had knocked them out of the playoffs uh, and those types of things in years past. And he was focused and, and did a great job leading his team. And, and that's one of the main things we're always going to look for in a quarterback is character and the ability to be a leader. And it's not always about winning the game because it's it's a team game but it's about putting yourself in a position to have an opportunity to be successful and and we feel like he'll do that sometimes it feels like it's only been a couple weeks since we saw you guys in Frisco <laughs> yeah yeah well it, I'm not saying that it for us sometimes it's it's interesting that you'd say it that way because sometimes it feels like uh, we just got here but then when you ask me about our Mississippi State game I'd say wow how long ago was that um, so as a season goes and draws out um, at times it can feel like the season is is a grinder on you but then when you put it in a big perspective it does feel like we were we were in Frisco just just yesterday what has this been like this this, this ride this well, the the probably the thing would come back to more to the players and how well they accepted us and and jumped on board. I'll just use those five O linemen that are all seniors as examples of guys that didn't balk at all. They jumped in and tried to learn things as fast as they could, and and that's what gave us the opportunity to, to be successful was the buy in from the players. What have you noticed out of Navy's secondary in those games where they really kind of got battle tested? 
Well, you know, you just got to look at the two safeties as examples, 10 and 11, very, very physical, very, very good football players, understand the fits on, on all the stuff, um, but yet still cover people when do, people do throw it against them. And, you know, people might say that they're going to give up some yards thrown, but yeah, they do. They give up some yards thrown, but they don't give up a whole bunch of points. I mean, they do a good job of, of getting off the field and, and giving their offense the ball. But the, their, secondary, their secondary, I think, are very, very smart. And, and play well together. You guys are so used to dominating conversation. <clears throat> How much yeah. is okay? We might be on the other side of this coin to our possession to be something more crucial. Well, I think it's important for our players to understand that uh, we are, are similar in styles of offense when it comes to you, we want to we want to hold the ball per se. We want to get done with the game and have 34, 35, 36 minutes of possession, and we want to be good on third down, um, and that's what they want to be. And, and they're also obviously similar to us. Um, if they do go for it on fourth down, they're expected to make it. You know, and I talk to our guys all the time about if Coach Kleiman asks us to go for it on fourth down, our mindset needs to be we need to be. 100%. Reality is you're not going to be 100%, but our mindset needs to be good. Give me the opportunity. Let's go move the chains. Looking back, how valuable has James Gilbert been? Well, both him and uh, Jordan have been huge for us because of the the depth they've given us, the ability when they're healthy to make big plays. You know, obviously, unfortunately, both those guys um, were were varying degrees of full speed um, during the season. Um, obviously, now we we feel like uh, in the bowl prep, both those guys should be full speed and be able to go. But uh, you know, James has done a great job of even though he's not a big guy of being a violent runner of the. Full football um, and makes big plays for us when, when we hand it to him. And then Jordan obviously has done a nice job not only getting it handed to him and being able to find the end zone, but also throwing it to him. What are your thoughts on uh, Arcadia and uh, Joe Urban and then any of the other younger running backs maybe we have to be able to see them? Yeah, really, those are the main two from that freshman class that that you know jump out to you and and to us as well. You know, Joe obviously has got a little bit more, uh, what I'd say, quick twitch, a little bit more just burst right now. But he's not nearly the size of guy that uh, you know um, Jacardia should be able to be a 220 pound tailback by the time he's all said and done. And I don't know his exact weight now, but he's probably somewhere in the 210 range right now. Um, and has good speed and good vision. Um, um, we've got to get all those guys to understand that college football is still different than than where they came from. You know, a high school setting has great players in high school. Now that next level is you got to pick your game up, and, and we feel good about both of them, but they still have room to room to grow. What do you feel like Deuce Vaughn and Young Ozzie can add to that running back room for you guys? Well, ability to have big, big plays, home run hitters. Um, you know, that was one of the things we were fortunate uh, uh, when we were at North Dakota State is guys finding their role, but being able to make big plays, even though they maybe wouldn't have 25 carries. And that's one of the things that we watch both those guys and say, whether it's handing it to them or throwing it to them, their ability to make explosive plays. Um, you know, I don't know their exact track times, but both of them, I would say, are, are very, very good with their top end speed and ability to make a big play for us.